Okay, specimen collectors that have been watching this video series on the five steps to a urine specimen collection for drug testing, we're getting ready to show you step five. Now, step five comes before step four because DOT counts a little bit funny. One, two, three, five, and four. So we're gonna go ahead and show you step five. Stay tuned. Okay, we are back continuing on with our series on the specimen collection process, whether it be a DOT specimen collection or very similar, a non-DOT specimen collection. We've already done steps one, two, and three. We have our sealed urine specimens ready to go in our bag. We're gonna continue on here today to show you how step four works. Actually, step five, because step five actually comes in front of step four. The DOT custody and control form counts a little bit funny. We do steps one, two, three, five, and then four. So we're gonna be doing step uh, five today. And basically we do step five after step three and we flip over to copy two of the custody and control form. And we call that copy two, the medical review officer copy. And there's a blue section on the form, step five completed by the donor. That is step five. And Tom, as my donor, I'm gonna be asking you to complete some information here. I'm gonna to read to you what you're gonna be signing just so that we're clear that you understand it. And it says, I certify that I've provided my urine specimen to the collector, that I have not adulterated it in any manner. Each specimen bottle used was sealed with a tamper evidence seal in my presence. And the information on this form and on the label affixed to each specimen bottle is correct. So Tom, what I'm gonna ask you to do is press very firmly. This has to go through four copies. I'm okay. gonna ask you to sign your name, print your name, today's date, your daytime phone number, include your cell phone, because that's how everybody gets a hold of everybody today. Okay. And if you have another number, that's fine, or just write same, and then include your date of birth. So this is your certification that this is your specimen. And please print as clearly as possible, because someone at the lab has to data enter your name in there. And we hate for them to write something like name illegible, because they couldn't re read it. So I see that uh, you're writing your name in there very legibly. I, I appreciate that. And I'll let Tom finish up with uh, the donor certification statement. And I always like to look at it now and make sure that his name is legible so that somebody at the lab can read it and they do the data entry. If his name isn't legible, maybe, maybe his writing isn't really good, um, I rewrite it right above, I rewrite his name. And I also wanna make sure that it went through the other copies and is readable on the other copies. So everything's looking good in this, in this case. And I just wanna point out one thing here in step five. If for any reason the donor refuses to sign the form, or if for any reason the donor has left or um, you know bolted out of the collection site or everything goes haywire, always as a collector, print the donor's name here. You always need to have the donor's name printed, whether the donor prints it or you print it. Always wanna have the donor's name on step five, copy two, the MRO copy. So I'm gonna go back to um, the front copy here. And now we've actually completed steps one, two, three, and five. And in our next video series, don't miss it, we're going to complete Step four, the collector certification. So I'm Joe Riley with National Drug Screening. Lots of information on our website and on our YouTube channel. Visit our website at www.nationaldrugscreening.com.